Last week was my birthday, and I got a little bit older, which, to be honest, I'm not really excited about. But I am excited about the present that my kids got me. They got together and got me the Logitech G29 steering wheel. You can kind of see it right here. It works for the PlayStation and PC, and I wanted this so that I could play racing games and do a little bit of development with it, because it seemed like a really fun device to build for. Once I got it open and set up, I grabbed a couple racing games from Steam and eventually from the Microsoft Game Pass because it was a dollar to get Forza. Then I started driving around and realizing it was a lot of fun. After maybe an hour or so though, the itch kind of came and I wanted to start seeing what it was like to do development with it. How does this thing interact? Can I just pull it into Unity? Can I make a racing game in a few minutes? What's that process like? Once I found the SDK, I created a new Unity project, pulled it in, and then realized that the assets that they had in that SDK were a little bit outdated and needed a DLL update. Once I went through that process, though, the steering wheel just kind of worked. I could see what I was doing, see the inputs from all the axes, the buttons, and everything else, and hit buttons to cause force feedback stuff, which was really cool. I was amazed at how easy it was to make it slippery. Just send in a command, and suddenly the game feels slippery. The SDK wasn't a game, though. You couldn't drive around a car or anything. You're just feeling the inputs or seeing the inputs and feeling the feedback. And I really wanted to make a game or something that I could at least drive around and experience and see what that felt like. So I was at a decision point where I needed to pick, am I going to create something from scratch or maybe consider using a starter kit? And in the past, well, in the distant past, I used to be very against starter kits and starter packs for, I think, a somewhat interesting reason. Maybe it's not that interesting. You tell me down below. But I used to think that if I used a starter pack, I wasn't really building a game. That I wasn't actually making a game. I was just kind of modding something. That it was more like modding an existing game than creating something new. And that I wasn't learning and building something that of my own. Nowadays, though, I've kind of changed that mindset quite a bit. And I'm a big fan of using starter packs and starter kits to get started and just kind of kick off the project, and then slowly replacing the pieces that you don't need or that don't work out well for you. I think that it's a good way to get started with something that you can just have up and running, decide whether or not your game's fun and interesting, and work on the unique parts about it that instead of kind of rebuilding all of the core functionality. So this time I decided I was going to go with some sort of a racing starter kit. So I did a little bit of searching, opened up the asset store, and actually the top recommended one was a really great fit. I opened the WebGL version of it, hit play, and it actually worked with the wheel. I was just playing, driving around in the web browser without doing anything. Instantly downloaded it, or first I bought it, then I downloaded it, imported it into my project, and with a little bit of modification was able to get force feedback working and get the pedals going with no code changes at all, just changing the input names. Now I don't have any really cool ideas to make it interesting and unique, it's just kind of a standard boring racing game. If you have something, drop a comment down below. But it did give me the inspiration to make a video about starter kits because I think that the value of getting started and getting up and running in 15 minutes or an hour or two, it just can't be understated. It's extremely useful getting in there and just seeing what the game's like and then building up your own special thing. So today we're going to talk about some different starter kits that I've used in the past and I'll give you some ideas of ones that I think are kind of interesting but I'd also really love to hear some of your favorite starter kits. So if you have a starter kit or a pack that you think is really helpful for people that you've used before please drop a comment down below for that too. I'd really like to know and maybe I'll add it into one of my upcoming videos. But before we go on, this video is sponsored by Blink, who creates great tools and assets that have everything you need to build a game. Blink just won the Asset Store Publisher of the Year Award and Best Development Tool for their RPG Builder, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute. Their entire store is currently 50% off, so if you're currently building a game, definitely go check out their assets. Blink is a team consisting of over 25 people releasing new assets every month. It's not just a small team. They've released over 70 assets in just two years. And their most popular tool, RPG Builder, is about to have its 2.0 release, which is supposed to have some huge updates. So stay tuned for that. Beyond that, they have a very active and helpful Discord community and hundreds of YouTube tutorials to get started with their tools. 
They've also released 11 free assets for you to try out, like this free stylized texture set that I like to use in my projects. So I definitely recommend you go check it out, grab the free stuff, and see if any of the 50% off deals are right for you. There's a link in the description below. Outside of the sponsored part, RPG Builder is actually a really great tool. It's got a lot of positive reviews. You can see it's five star all the way and people really love it because it lets you build an RPG without having to write all of the code. It's something that I've played with a little bit. I've never built a full on RPG with it, but if I were going to build an RPG, it would be my first step. It's the thing that I would jump to because it's got all of the core pieces that I would want to put in. It's got all of the systems that I would want, like combat, quests, inventory, abilities, you know, spells, buffs, loot, and all that type of stuff. All of the things that you would want in an RPG. And you're going to see that that's kind of the case with all of these different starter kits. They generally have all of the core features that you want so that you can put in the Again, unique and interesting things about your game, whether that's the art, the design, the characters, or some fun mechanic that you're building on top of this, this system or these systems to make you know an interesting thing with. If you're not into RPGs though, one of the kits that I have used pretty extensively is the RTS engine. I've actually done a couple of videos where I went through some integration, creating different units, and putting together, well, starting to put together at least, a game that was kind of a mix of Command and & Conquer and Fortnite with this engine. It's really powerful and it let me, again, just get right to the interesting parts of my game and then quickly decide that maybe it wasn't nearly as interesting as I was thinking. And it also kind of made me remember that with RTSs, there's a lot that goes into the design and the, uh, the art and all that to make it fun and interesting. The code part is pretty standard and I could just use a kit like this to deal with majority of the things I wanted. I just need to figure out how to make it fun and interesting, which for me again is always the hard part. <laughs> when I mentioned I was going to record this video, a couple people also asked if I could talk a little bit about some of the MMO starter kits like Atavism and UMMORPG. Of the two, I've only actually used UMMORPG. I think that I got it when it was on sale, although I have played with it quite a bit because I thought it was a really interesting project. Atavism looks pretty interesting too. It was just outside my price range for experimenting and kind of seeing if I wanted to use parts of it. UMMORPG gave you that full MMO feeling, or I shouldn't say full, but the core of an MMO feeling where you could run around, log in, and deal with all of the networking stuff. If you're building an MMO or you're considering building an MMO, using something like this is going to jumpstart you months. It may not be the perfect framework for your long-term game. You may have differences of opinion on the way that things should be put together, but if you actually just want to have a game up and running, get going and start figuring out what's going to make your MMO unique, something like this definitely can really, really speed development up. It's the kind of thing that I love to see and just the tools that I, I just think that everybody should start using. Again, you can always change things out, modify stuff later, but getting started and actually having a project up and running and working right away, I think is extremely valuable. It's a lot more valuable than having concepts and ideas and just thoughts and stuff on paper and plans. So I, I really like these toolkits. But if you've used UMMORPG or one of the other MMO ones, drop a comment down below and let me know. Are there issues with them? Are there really cool things about them? Are there ones that I don't know about that you would recommend? If so, I'm also kind of curious about that. See what I should be checking out and staying up to date with this stuff. And I'm sure everybody else watching does too. And if you'd like to see stuff about different starter kit types, maybe some 2D ones or some other game types, drop a comment and let me know. Or if there's a kit that you think is really good that I should probably talk about and share, I'd love to know about that too. And it doesn't have to be an MMO one. And also, finally, don't forget to check out Blink and their awesome tools and art assets. All their stuff is currently 50% off, so I encourage you to go grab some stuff before the sale ends. And of course, you can do so by simply clicking the link in the description.